you are a hard working person. You get things done. You are productive day after day after day, month after month. But after a while, you're starting to realize that you're slowing down. Things are a little bit more tough today than they were yesterday. And coffee just does not have the same kick that it used to have. What's what's going on here? Hey guys, I'm Sean and I want to change the way you think and I want to talk about the infamous burnout. This is something that I think everyone has come across at least some point in time in their life. And I want to put a little bit of a different spin on it that I actually don't hear all that often. So with that, let's get into it. Before we talk about burnouts, let's give ourselves a mental model. This mental model is the emotional bank account. Now, what this is, is essentially a counter for when you're reaching burnout. It is a set amount of, let's just say, energy that you have before things start to slow down, before you're starting to reach that critical burnout point. Every single activity that you do, you either take from this bank account or you give to this bank account. So the bank account either goes up or it goes down after every single activity. Now, the more activities that you do that take away from this bank account, the closer you get to the burnout point. However, the more you give to this account, the higher that value goes, the better. So let's use that mental model to tackle burnout because this is something that I'm sort of starting to experience nowadays with all that's going on and I have some things that I do to stave off burnout because trust me guys, you do not want to get there. I've been burnt out many times in my life and it is just no fun. This is when you make the worst mistakes. This is when you are the harshest to those that are close to you and you have the shortest possible fuse. I've got a very simple criteria for what actually gives and what takes away from this proverbial bank account. And that is, do the activities that you're doing progress you towards your life or are they kind of pointless? Now, this might seem an overly simplistic point of view for your emotional bank account. However, I think it's actually very apt. If you look at people that are the hardest working people, if you look at people like Elon Musk, if you look at people like Gary Vee, like Tom Bailu, all of these guys seem to have basically an infinite amount in the tank. How can they possibly have this? Well, they have this because what they're doing is what they want to be doing. It's moving them ahead in life. And because they're doing this, the activities that they're doing actually give to their emotional bank accounts instead of take away. And so the only things that they really need to be worried about is how physically demanding these things are. Now, obviously, there are other things that go into the emotional bank account, but for now, let's just focus on this because I think this is possibly the heaviest hitter when it comes to whether or not you're going to burn out or whether or not an activity burns you out. And so if we can solve this, then we can basically solve burnout as a whole. So with that, let's get into what you can actually do. So the first thing, and this is the most obvious thing, is you have to be physically able to keep up with your emotions. Meaning that you need to go hit the gym, you need to look at your diet, and you need to get those two in order. Now, I'm not going to go too much into depth in this video, but I will for sure be tackling those subjects again. But for now, look at something like a keto or a paleo diet and start by eliminating the foods that they tell you to eliminate or look at some sort of a workout channel and get a basic workout going today. Because ultimately, if you physically can't keep up, then there is no way that you can emotionally keep up. Now, there's actually very little way that every single activity that you do will actually give to this bank account. And so we need to actually find the way to replenish it in order so that you can actually have it full 24 seven or basically 24 seven. And to do that, you need to essentially pamper yourself. Yes, basically what I'm saying is if you take a little bit of time out every single day or every single week or every single month and you do something to top up your bank account, 
then you will have the most amount of energy that you can possibly have and therefore you can be the most productive. So yes, actually taking a little bit of time to replenish some of those lost little bit, little units of energy, then you can actually perform at your peak almost always. So what can these things look like? Basically anything that recharges you, be it a video game, be it going to the spa or getting a massage because physical feedback as in a massage is a really good way to de-stress from everything that is going on around you because ultimately mental stress usually manifests itself in some sort of a physical way. So having a massage can really work out those kinks that your emotions have been causing your body. But it can basically be whatever it is that actually recharges you. So now that we're continually replenishing our supply of energy, let's move on to how we can make the activities conserve less or actually give us more energy. And to do that, we need to tackle your emotions. So the first and most obvious thing you can do is not think about it. Yes, you heard me right. It seems super obvious and almost counterintuitive, but if you're doing a thing that you don't wanna be doing, that, and this is important, does not last forever, as in you just need to finish this 100 pages or you just need to finish this set amount of things and then you're done, just don't think about it. So often we fixate on how much we don't like to do something. And by doing that, we are draining our bank accounts so, so, so fast, which is one of the main reasons why something like school actually leads us to burning out. Because a lot of times, unless someone's super passionate about school, they're realistically gonna be complaining about a course or a subject or an assignment or what have you. And by complaining about those things again and again and again, because few people complain only once, that way you're draining your bank account every single time you're complaining. So if you stopped thinking about whether or not it was useful, then at the very least, it's gonna cost you less emotional stress every time you do it. But before we get too bugged down in school, I've already covered whether or not you're a bad student, which actually ties in really nicely with this video. So once this video is over, if you think you might be a bad student, click on the little like card because that I think is a really important thing for you to know because ultimately you are not a bad student. And if you're liking this video so far, please click the subscribe button down below. It would mean the world to me. So moving on, way number two is our good old friend reframing. Guys, I know I keep using this, I'm sorry, but reframing is such a powerful tool. So how can reframing help us this time around? Well, reframing is very powerful here because again, Keep in mind, the reason you're getting burnt out is because you're, the task that you're doing likely isn't moving you forward, or more importantly, it's a subjective call. You don't think it's moving you forward. It doesn't, doesn't feel like it's moving you forward. And so if you reframe the task into something that does move you forward, aka say you're doing a construction job and you're really hating and you're starting to burn out, well, you can reframe the construction job as you're building a nice and muscular body. And now every single time you do the job, you move yourself forward. Because money might not actually be something that you think moves you forward. And in fact, most of the time, money is not a good reframe because we don't really care about money because our brains don't really care about money too much. The next point that I have is let's audit your task. Does it actually not move you forward? And if it you really does not move you forward and you tried reframing it and it still doesn't move you forward, well, let's ask the question of can you stop it? Because ultimately, if it's actually futile for you to be doing that thing, well then, why are you doing it? If something is useless, then stop doing it. It might not be as simple as that, but let's just consider whether or not you can stop the task. And if you can, maybe do. If you're able to either reframe or remove the tasks that bring you down, that you don't think move you forward, then you will be able to keep going with 
everything. Basically, forever. I really hope you guys found this useful, and I hope to see you next time.